love music because music, it kind of helps us to usher in the, the spirit of the living God into our presence. And so now as we prepare our hearts for prayer, maybe there's someone or something that's on your mind and in your heart and you need to bring it to the Lord or there's something special going on in your life and you need God's assistance. This is a great time that we can come together. I call this corporate prayer. Corporate prayer is a time that all of us come together and go before the Lord together. So let us pray. Oh Lord God, only you are holy. Only you are righteous. Only you are faultless. Only you are perfect. Lord, our desire is to become who you want us to be. Our desire is to give up ourselves and to present it before you and to ask you to have your way in our lives. Our desire is to please you and only you. So this morning, as we come together in corporate prayer, we come before you as humble as we know how. Because we know that you are the answer to all of our problems, all of our situations. You are the one who keeps us and provides for us. You are the one that makes a way out of no way. You are the one, the solid rock that we stand on and know of all of the ground is sinking sand. So, Lord God, as we come before you, we ask you to hear the hearts and the minds that are here, that are joined together with me in worship and in praise. Those who join me in fellowship with you in the spirit and physically, Lord God, I ask that you just hear our heart's desire, hear our needs, hear our struggles, hear our joys. Lord God, hear us. There may be something that's weighing us down and we don't know how to get beyond it. Lord God, we present it to you and ask you to take it away, Lord God. And if, if it's meant to be for our good, strengthen us that we're able to carry it and to stand with it, knowing that you are with us. If we're dealing with sickness in our body, Lord God, give us the faith to believe the impossible that you are healer and you can you can heal whatever our situation is. There's nothing too hard for you. You heal the, the lepers, Lord, of a disease where there was no cure. You, you heal the woman with the issue of blood who suffered for 12 years. You, you brought to life a, a dead little girl and a, and a little boy, Lord God. You restored them to life. You restored a grown man, Lazarus, to life when everybody thought it was over. Four days in the grave and you brought him back. We know that you are a miracle worker, Lord God, and you do that for your children. But even if you don't do a miracle, we still believe that you are God and we still believe that you have our back. We still believe that you love us incredibly. If you never do another thing, we thank you just for saving our souls. There may be someone who's hurting emotionally or spiritually and don't know which way to go, Lord, and it's seeking for direction and seeking for purpose. Lord God, I pray that you guide them and order their steps. There may be someone who is without a home and, and not sure where the next meal is coming from or where the next dime is going to fall into their pocket. Lord God, give them hope, give them assurance, and then open up the hearts and minds of those around them to be a blessing to them. Heavenly Father, there are many things happening all over the world, and we know that you are in complete control. It may seem like chaos all around us, but we know, Lord God, that nothing happens without your permission. And if, it is, if it's allowed to happen, it's for your purposes. And you've promised that for those who belong to you, that you will guide us and you will keep us. And even if we should suffer in some way, you promise that in the end, we will have the victory and we will have life eternal in you. We will have the greatest reward of living with you throughout eternity. Lord God, for all these things, we bless you. We hallow your name. We give you the glory. We magnify you. Lord God, we just thank you. And, and we can't help but to praise you this morning. So Lord God, for all the blessings that you've given to us, we say thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. 
If there's something that's not right in us, fix it, Lord. Show us the way that we can be righteous in your sight. These things I pray and I ask in the name of Jesus, the name that you've given us, the name that through which you hear us, the name in which we are healed, the name in which we are delivered, the name of Jesus, which is, has all power, that even the devils quake at it. Amen. Amen to God be the glory. Ah, oh, prayer time. Isn't it a beautiful thing to be able to go to God in prayer and to talk to our Father and to share our hearts and our minds? Um, that's why prayer is such a blessing. As we continue in our worship, we're going to do a song of praise, um, or I say a song of worship, I should say. This is a song um, that... Um, that I thought we would do today, a song by Sonny Badu. Uh, it's a worship medley. So join me as we prepare our hearts for the sermon. Tell him who you think he is. Tell him who you think he is. Don't some of us stand behind songs that people have written and we say what people said to God, to him. But he wants you to open up your mouth and tell him that you are God. Praise Jehovah. You are God Almighty. Praise Jehovah. In all his splendor we praise your name we praise your name jehovah 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 Everybody say, we praise you. Everybody say, Jehovah. Jehovah. We praise you. We praise you. Oh, Jesus. We praise you. 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 Sweet, 
Blessed Trinity, hallelujah. God is good. Is he not an awesome? God in three persons, the Holy Trinity. God blesses us with that each and every day. Let us pray. God, we thank and praise you for this preaching moment. We thank and praise you for what you're doing in the life of Walls Chapel. We thank and praise you for what you're doing in each one of our lives. Now, Lord God, sanctify me yet again. Touch my lips, O oh Lord God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight because you are my strength and my redeemer. Hear ye my prayer. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. I want to, before I even get started, I should have did this earlier. I want to wish all the men happy Father. Amen. Truly is a blessing to have a father. Mine died several years ago, and uh, I miss him greatly in his days like this that I think about him. But I know that he's safely in the arms of the Lord, and that's that's the blessing of um, you know when you share the gospel with someone and you know that they received it. Right? I made sure that I shared with my daddy, and um, we had many discussions on it. And so this morning, um, to all the fathers in the house. I'm so glad you're here today. Amen. All right. So let us get to the to the word that God has given me today. It's a little different. Um, you heard Hebrews chapter eight. I want to be talking about uh, covenants. I want to talk about covenants this morning. Um, that 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 word covenant came to my spirit and I was contemplating. Well, what exactly is a covenant? What does that mean? And, and from God's perspective. And also, what does it mean for men? For one thing, uh, 
a couple of years ago, I was blessed with being able to buy a new home. And it was something I had prayed to God for for a long time. And um, things lined up for me to go ahead and buy that house. But when I bought that house, when I sat down at the table, and if you've ever bought a house, the, 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 the papers are about an inch thick, right? You, you sign, it feels like you're signing your whole life over. And it's basically a contract that you're, sign, that you're entering to. And this contract says how you're going to be paying, um, how long you're going to be paying, what are the consequences if you don't pay? What, what are the consequences if you pay late? And, and all that is spelled out in this, this several, several, many, many, many pages. In fact, if, in fact, it feels like your fingers are falling off because you have to initial every page. You got to sign several pages. Um, it's a, a very uh, and it's a 30 year, 30 year commitment. So a contract may be similar to a covenant, but the difference is that a contract is for a set season, for a small amount of time, a, a predefined set of time, unlike a covenant. Another example in our personal role is marriage. Marriage is a contract. How many of you know that marriage is a contract? Actually, marriage is a, is a special type of contract that you can actually call a covenant because when a male and a female stand at the altar to, to pledge their allegiance and pledge their love and to pledge their undying faithfulness until they die, they're actually making a covenant. Amen. And the, the one who is watching is God himself. God is watching when that male and that female are standing before all the people. God, too, is listening to make them promises. See, a covenant is lasting until death, whereas a contract is for a set period of time. See, God himself made a covenant. When we look at the Old Testament, God made a covenant with man from the very beginning and he established his relationships and he did it in such a way that he was trying to show how even though God, the creator of the universe, who has control over everything, thought enough of men to make a covenant of friendship. Yes, that's right, brothers and sisters. God made a covenant of friendship with men because he being who he is, sitting high and above all things and in control of all things, didn't have to make a covenant with man, but he decided to strictly out of love. We see this throughout history, starting um, with Noah, when God made a covenant with Noah, when he saw all around the world and he saw that Noah was a man that that kept true to God himself, whereas everybody else had failed. So God made a covenant with him. In fact, Genesis 6, 18 says, but I will establish my covenant with you and you must go into the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your son's wives with you. God made a covenant that I am going to keep you. I'm going to make a way for you to survive what I'm going to do with the entire earth because I see you and I found favor with you. Then God established a covenant with the earth itself. He said in Genesis 9, 11, he says, I will establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. Then God said, this is the sign of the covenant which I am making between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all generations. I have set my rainbow in the cloud and it shall be a sign of a covenant between me and the earth. See, God, even after he made a covenant with Noah and after he had he had wiped out humanity to start over, he decided that he would make a covenant with every new human being and with the earth that he would never flood it again. And when God makes a promise, it is for eternity. And so when I see a rainbow, just the other day, I was watering my garden and I saw through the water that God's beautiful rainbow was appearing. And so every time I see that rainbow, it reminds me of that covenant, of that promise that God has made. God also made a covenant with Abraham in Genesis 15, 18. It says on that same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying to your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the grand, great Euphrates River. 
Genesis 17, 4 says, as for me, my covenant is with you and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer will your name be called Abram, but your name will be Abraham. For I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. God made a covenant, a lasting eternal covenant with Abraham. And he promised that there will be uh, the whole world will be blessed because of him and because of his seed. And even today, with those who uh, become children of God become children of Abraham. See, God's love never fails. And when he makes a promise, even back then in the beginning, he continues till today. God didn't stop right there. He also made a covenant with Moses and the children of Israel. In Exodus, Moses went up to God and the Lord called him from the mountain saying, thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I lifted you up on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will faithfully obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my special possession out of all the nations for all the earth is mine and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. See, God had made a promise to Moses and to, to, to Abraham's children that I'm going to make you a, a nation of priests. I want you to be my mouthpieces to the world. I want you to tell the world who I am and teach them my ways so that they too can have and enter in a covenant relationship with me. God, who is a wonderful God, still makes covenants. Hebrew chapter eight, verse nine says, it will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they did not remain faithful to my covenant. And I turned away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts and I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. See, God made a covenant that, that continues on and, and, and he started in the Old Testament in a covenant in which it was, it was meant on obedience and obedience to the laws. But in the new covenant, in the new promise, God promises that the laws won't be in a book somewhere or on a tablet, but the laws will be placed in our hearts or, and put in our minds that God will say that everybody who has a will, a desire to connect with what I've put in them can become my children. See, this new covenant is a greater promise. It's a better promise because it's a promise that God says, if you, if you are willing to receive what I put in you, if you're willing to tap into that thing, that spirit thing that's inside of you, if you're willing to give of yourself to God and, and place yourself at God's feet and says, God, use me as you will. God promises that he will do amazing and remarkable, remarkable things. Jesus is the author and the finisher of this new covenant. Matthew 26, 27 says, then he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Jesus gave his blood as a new covenant for the remission of sins of the whole world. Why did God do this when he didn't have to? He did it because of love. God loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe on him shall have everlasting life. See, that thing called love, that, that covenant, when you make a promise, when you make a promise unto death, See, that's what a covenant is. A covenant is when when you're willing to say, God, 
I'm going to receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I'm making a covenant with you. When I when I crawled down to the altar and I confessed my sins to God and I said, Lord, I'm like filthy rags. And I realized that the things and the way I've been living is so wrong in your eyes. And I just don't even deserve your mercy. When I crawled to that altar and I said, Lord, Father God in heaven, forgive me of my sins. God says, when you do that. And you receive Jesus as your Lord and as your savior. You're making a covenant with him. You're making a promise to him that you're going to make him make Jesus master over your life. You're making a promise to him that you're going to do all that you that you're supposed to do to create that relationship and make it strong. You're going to study the word like your life depends on it. You're going to seek him in prayer in your private time. You're going to be obedient to what you've learned through the Holy Spirit and you're going to live holy even sacrificially so you're going to you're going to give your life to God and you're going to say lord take me and use me to be your mouthpiece to someone else take me and use my finances to be a blessing to someone else take my time oh lord and and use it as you will that day that we gave our lives to Christ we made a entered into a covenant with God and we said Lord we know you're going to uphold your part because you demonstrated throughout history that you maintain your covenants into the very end and although the people failed God never failed not God never gave up on his children God continued to reach out to send prophet after prophet after prophet to remind them of the covenant that they've entered to he gave example after example he even caused a a holy man to marry a prostitute in the book of Hosea as an example he says I want the world to understand so I'm gonna give them a, a vivid illustration that they can see this man marrying a prostitute and bringing her into his home and trying to make her a woman of righteousness and even in spite of him loving her with all of his heart she steps out on him and cheats on him she leaves him for other men and she goes out doing what she's what she did before but because of love He was commanded by God to go and get her, go clean her up, go take her out of that filth, go buy her from even enslavement and bring her back and restore her to her place of honor. Because that's the example that God was giving us. See, when God is in covenant with his children, he takes it very seriously. And he desires that we take it very seriously as well he desires for us to finish the race and finish it well you don't get a prize for getting in the race you get the prize when you finish it there are people who get on the journey they get on the path and somehow they they get off the path they find their way in places they shouldn't be because they didn't they weren't obedient to what God said they didn't fill their heart and their minds with the words of God to protect them from the enemy. And so the enemy whispered lies into their ears or or the enemy showed them TV shows and movies of things that are illicit or things that God does not want us to have in our spirit. And we fell victim to the, 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 the traits of the enemy because we failed to obey God in his first thing. When, if we're seeking God with our whole heart and we're studying his word like it ain't nobody's business, when the enemy comes along, we got the word in our heart and it's buried so deep, we can see the lies of Satan. We can see the enemy coming from a mile away. And when we don't, we're praying constantly so we know that God has a hedge of protection around us. So we walk in that boldness. We walk in knowing that God is with us. God wants us to really recognize that that he entered into a covenant with us and it is until death do us part it's for eternity but he wants us to finish the race and to remember that God does not forget his covenants one thing that we don't really realize that even today God makes covenants with us did you know that that you can have your own personal covenant with God You can talk to God about some situation in your life and and you can ask God to enter into covenant with you for something. And God is faithful and he will. But if you do that, you need to be sure that you're sure that you're going to keep your part because God doesn't like it when we make a promise to him and we don't keep it. He takes offense to that. I know of this woman who... um, I've been reading her book on spiritual warfare and she was she was sharing with me how how God 
had knew what was going to happen many months down the line. And she was in the middle of a serious spiritual battle in which it was a life and death situation. And because God knows all things before it even happens, he, he, he talked to her about entering into a covenant with him because he knew he needed to have a special covenant to protect her. See, um, and so at first, this, 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 this young lady didn't want to do it because she was coming out of witchcraft and she thought that she could still operate in that, in that, in that, in, from the powers of the enemy. But God was teaching her that she had to learn to, de to not depend on herself, but to lean solely on God, but solely on God's protection. And so after a while, her friend had to encourage her to, um, to actually agree with this um, covenant. But what made her do it finally is that her friend saw how rebellious the other lady was. And so this friend went to God and asked God to forgive her and to take the for her to be able to take the punishment of what she rightfully deserved by disobeying God when God said he wanted to do a covenant. And so God heard her prayer. And because of her friend's disobedience, God put some some sickness on her and she got so sick, so violently sick that her friend now was crying out to God, apologizing because she realized the seriousness of her error. And as a result, the two women together entered into a covenant and many months later, they were attacked violently. But because God had a covenant with them. In the spiritual realm, God protected these ladies. See, God is a God who still makes covenants with his children, and he still desires to want to be a blessing to us. But we have to really understand that God, when he makes a covenant, is for life. And he wants us to be serious about it because ultimately, everything that God does for us is because he loves us. If God is asking us to do something, it's because he's either trying to protect us, he's trying to develop us, he's trying to prune us for us to be more fruitful, or he's trying to keep us out of harm's way. Whatever it is that God is doing, our job is just to submit, be obedient. So this Father's Day, as I thought about covenant and I thought about how um, God is a God of covenant, Think about what you need to make a covenant with God yourself. There's someone in here that may, maybe you need to go before God in prayer and you may need to say, Lord, I need, this is what I need to do. And this is where I need to go. Would you show me the way I'm willing to enter into covenant with you? I'm willing to make a, make a choice and to be obedient to you. See, I consider myself in covenant with God those years ago when God called me into ministry. And I said that I would pick up my cross and I would bear it. I didn't know where God was going to lead me. And I still don't know where he's going, where he's taking me. But I'm still in covenant. And I'm still staying true as best as I know how. And I know that you can do the same for you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, I thank and praise you for this time. I pray, oh, Lord, that all those who are under the sound of my voice, that you would bless them that you will remind them that you are a covenant maker and you keep your word. You are faithful. You are true. We can depend on you no matter what. And if there's something that's not right in us, Lord God, help us not to be a covenant breaker. Help us to be strong. Teach us your ways and your will, Lord God, and we'll be faithful to obey. All these things we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. I'm going to, um, I'm sorry, trying to do two things at once here. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to.